In Solitary, 2021 by Andy Smith, Mixed Media. This work is an attempt to understand how enforced solo quarantine must feel, in particular in terms of the senses. The Last Monster, 2020, by Anna F.C. Smith, Ceramic. This bubbling, pustule-covered beast is extracted from a satirical print produced in 1802 that was fear-mongering about Jenner's smallpox vaccine. People were inoculated against the widespread and devastating disease smallpox with the less deadly cowpox. Rumour and fear about the side effects of being given cowpox included that people would sprout cows from boils on their bodies or turn into cows themselves. The last monster is the imagined folkloric invention of rumour in the face of new science and cures. By Consequent, The Fountain of Rooms and Distillations, 2021, by Anna F.C. Smith. Ceramic, water, soap. This bubbling fountain of phlegm plays with ideas around cure and disease from the early modern and modern eras, which are poignant in the current pandemic. The fountain is at once noses gushing forth with threatening snot and infection, and also mimics the spring water wells whose purpose was for curing ailments. Filled with soap, the water would actually protect against disease. Bubbles in this piece are both the frothing vapours of illness and the cleansing foam of cure. Bubbles by Bubbles, 2021, by Vicky Reynolds Crompton, Ceramic. These pieces were more about process than form. After Vicky watched videos on bubble glazing, it seemed an obvious process to experiment with for this exhibition. However, it proved harder than it looked to get a decent result. Vicky wanted the forms to be open, to provide as much surface area for the decoration as possible. A uniform circle like a soap bubble was again an obvious choice. When the actual time came to glaze the final pieces, Vicky's son was isolating after a positive Covid case in his year group. A final obvious choice was to get him to help glaze them. Social bubbles glazing bubble forms with bubble glazing. The finished results show the fragility of all the bubbles, physically, socially and emotionally. Place in Shelter, 2021 by Catherine Ferns. Oil on Canvas. This work was created while Catherine was on furlough during the lockdown in the UK, while her friends and family in Canada were also in lockdown. We were all isolated in our own bubbles and struggling in our disconnection with the world outside our homes. Our pain feels individual and unique when we're alone so that we forget that everyone is struggling. Everyone is alone and the isolation we feel should only be physical. Despite the technological advances that allow us to communicate clearly with people in the next room, next city, next country, with the press of a button, it can still be hard to find connection with others in a real and meaningful way. Within the bubble of isolating depression, we can maintain those barriers emotionally by cutting off communication with those we care about to expand the distance between ourselves and others. The figures in this work are all struggling in different ways, in their own spaces, without realising their struggles overlap with those around them. 2020-2021 Simulators 2021 by Claire Doyle Two Wooden Sculptures This piece of performance art consists of Claire and one other person standing still with their heads inside the sculptures for 15 minutes. These stoic forms are simulators for the presence of personal space, they're a homage to the isolation, claustrophobia and peace experienced during lockdown. These welcoming spaces for heads are an escape from the overstimulating world, away from the rush and buzz of people and expectations. Reset, Conform, Control 2020 by Stephen Cunliffe Acrylic on Canvas the piece was influenced by the work of Wilhelmina Barnes Graham. This is the only piece left that Stephen considered successful. The others were painted over. Britain's at its best in a crisis, part three, 
2021 by Lucy Sharkey. Hand embroidery on upcycled sheet. Lucy's piece depicts a man furiously yelling at the unfortunate shop assistant who has asked him to put on a mask, abide by social distancing, and leave a few of the 40 packets of toilet roll in his trolley for someone else. While the majority of us have shrugged and got on with it during lockdown, unfortunately, a few have taken being asked to follow rules as a personal attack and made it harder for everyone. Celestial Blue 2020 by Debbie Budenberg Installation Doll's House Audio and Video Installation Celestial Blue challenges our perception of the dualities of space, place and time. It seemingly blends preconceived notions of the particular, secular, material and finite with those of the sacred, universal, cosmic and eternal. Distinctions, separations, boundaries or limitations conceived of and applied to our knowledge experience and understanding of the cosmic and earthly realms, creators and created, sacred and profane, spiritual and material, bubbles, spaces, places and geographical locations, and time as linear, finite, cyclical, eternal or simultaneous. And the existence of the self and our communities within them is challenged in the artwork's melding of dualistic beliefs, disparate realms and preconceived realities. Embodying notions of the sacred, universal, cosmic, eternal, cyclical and simultaneous in the everyday lives and experiences of individuals, families and communities. Celestial Blue questions faith. What is it we place our trust in to sustain us and our communities? We've never been stronger. 2021 by Jenna Tilly, acrylic on canvas. Sticking with the theme of Covid bubbles, Jenna decided to make a painting about herself and her partner Charlie, whom she spent the entire lockdown with. He was the only other person Jenna was able to feel human touch with during the pandemic as they lived together. Jenna feels it is fitting to create a piece about their time spent together during one of the hardest years of their lives. Jenna created a body painting using a matte black background and then used herself and Charlie to paint the canvas with their bodies to express how during lockdown they became one person and to show their love for each other. Jenna wants the piece to show passion, love and resilience with the use of bold colours and gestures on the canvas. July 19th, 2021 by Brian Whitmore. Ink calligraphy on wood. This is a Japanese Zen calligraphy Enzo or circle. Titled July 19th, it symbolises a bubble bursting. It's meant to hang freely from the ceiling so it can be encircled when viewing as it has a calligraphic note on the back which reads, The circle is a reminder that each moment is not just the present, but is inclusive of our gratitude to the past and our responsibility to the future. Two metres apart and a world away, 2021. And nature will be our salvation, 2021, by Elaine Phipps. Acrylic, paint, ink, crayon, pastel on paper. Bubbles will be, for a lot of people, in living memory at least, associated with Covid and the legally defined definitions of support and allowed connection. This soft word, describing a sense of safety, support and cocooning, has latterly become a pressure vessel of anxiety, uncertainty, inequality and rage. Much like the virus mutating into something much darker, leaving feelings of manipulation, isolation, suspicion and despair. Conversely, bubbles have also been a refuge and a huge reminder of the goodness that shows up and leaves love in the shape of food, offers of help and human contact by phone or online. They have been a chance to embrace the positive, to notice and live in the here and now, to reflect and change. The works that Elaine has submitted 
tries to embrace some of these aspects and to capture the tension between ennui and a terrible anxiety. Soap Bubbles, 2021, by Emma Saunders, Lino Print. Emma found it really hard to be creative during lockdown. The restrictions and confinement had a negative effect on her ability to produce art. The return of freedoms has coincided with a new love of reduction lino printing, and Emma decided to take on the challenge of lino printing some soap bubbles. Hidden Object, 2020, by Emma Saunders. Acrylic on canvas board. This is a piece Emma completed just before lockdown, and it is part of an unfinished series on hidden objects. Another Ithaca, 2020, by David Stanley. Acrylic on canvas. This painting was the first piece David made during the first lockdown in 2020. He made it in his garage, away from his studio at Cross Street Arts in Standish. Its title is an echo of David's feelings of isolation, like Odysseus, snared by Circe, longing for his island home. Beyond the Gate, 2020, and Ghost Trees, 2020, by Jane Furhurst, Oil on Canvas. Oil paintings of Jane's garden, her bubble during lockdown. Jane's garden has always been a sanctuary for her, never more so than during the periods of imposed isolation during the last 18 months. In 2020, the glorious spring weather meant Jane was able to paint outdoors, and she took full advantage to both enjoying working al fresco and to engage with her garden on a very intimate level. And even as the autumn arrived, Jane continued to work in her garden. Using oil paint on canvas, Jane was able to capture the atmosphere of the garden as a place with its own uncanny presence. It was her world in a bubble. And still the sun rises. 2020 by Stephen Heaton. Woodblock print and acrylic inks on watercolour paper. Stephen creates work that examines time, memory and human interaction within the world and nature's dominance, whereby this use begins to decline, leaving a footprint of questionable and lost significance, and still the sun rises. During lockdown, with all of Stephen's planned exhibitions postponed, workshops and art fairs cancelled, he spent many hours walking around the countryside where he lives, collecting sketches, shapes, memories and thoughts. Stephen started working in his garden, making woodblock prints, and took part in the Artist Support Pledge, an absolutely wonderful idea by Matthew Burroughs, to help artists by supporting each other, selling and collecting each other's work. This woodblock print is part of that pledge. NQ Mini Break 2020 by Andy Smith Oil on Canvas During lockdown in isolation, painting and drawing became an essential daily ritual in terms of Andy's mental well-being. By summer, Andy was low on his usual inspirations and references, so when there was an easing of restrictions in autumn, he visited Manchester for one day and took photographic references to sustain his practice through winter. This painting is a result of that excursion. Bubble 1, 2021, and Bubble 2, 2021, by Martin Lucas. Collage, using vintage postcards. From the Over Story, by Richard Powers. If we could see green, we'd see a thing that keeps getting more interesting the closer we get. If we could see what green was doing, we'd never be lonely or bored. If we could understand green, we'd learn how to grow all the food we need in layers three deep, on a third of the ground we need right now with plants that protected one another from pests and stress. If we knew what green wanted, 
We wouldn't have to choose between the Earth's interests and ours. They'd be the same. I Can't Stop Smoking, 2021, Amy Cecilia Lee. Digital illustration on paper. This illustration was created for the Bubbles exhibition and depicts Amy in one of the various stages during lockdown, stuck in her own bubble. Amy held this perception that she should be constantly using the time to create things and that when she did nothing, she was wasting time or failing. Amy smoked too much and sat around a lot thinking about who she was and how she turned out. A Biogenesis, 2021, by Dustin Lyon, Mixed Media. A biogenesis ties together one of the modern evolutionary theories on how life originated and the story of how early organisms built cell walls or protective bubbles around themselves, creating a barrier against physical and environmental threats. A biogenesis used to refer to the no discredited hypothesis of spontaneous generation. It was once believed that complex living organisms could arise spontaneously from non-living matter, such as warm pools of water or primordial soups. Catkin, 2021, and Tree Knot, 2021, by Louise Garman, G. Clay Print. In these images, created during lockdown, Louise has attempted to capture the natural world within a bubble. The energy from a knot on a tree and the delicate catkin can be seen within. The colour changes are striking and unnatural, it is an emotional response to an unreal, changing world of the pandemic, but one that was strangely liberating. Louise has overdone these images, improvised and layered the watercolours in translucent yet striking colourways, and has painted animated energy lines, striving to break free of the conventional. Lockdown, 2021, by Joyce Coulton. Felt tip on old envelopes. Lockdown. No friendly visitors coming through the door, just junk mail. The contents weren't of interest to Joyce, but the geometric patterns inside the envelopes were. Joyce began to recycle them. Straight and wavy lines, dots, squares, oblongs and circle designs. Bubbles. The printed lines guided Joyce in drawing textures, patterns and images. Faces. Footprints in the snow, letters and numbers, buildings and landscape, each provided an interesting challenge. We long to return to normal, but normal led to this. 2021 by Brian Whitmore, Perspex Sculpture. This work is a Perspex bubble with the words by English scientist Ed Young encased inside which reads, we long to return to normal, but normal led to this. This bubble is hung from the ceiling and an intense light projected through. This creates a wonderful moon-like rotating shadow encircled by an orb of light. Life Givers, 2021, by Liz Chapman. Resin sculptures and digital video installation. Bubbles are amazing transporters of life. When waves crash against the shore, this action creates plumes of different sized bubbles, transferring life-giving gases such as oxygen into the ocean. The study of bubbles has a key role in ecology, scientific advancements, and helping scientists to understand scientific concepts. For example, in small-scale experiments, the colours of light on bubbles and the patterns that they create help to track the formation of storms on the surface of other planets. This sculpture and digital video installation combine form, refraction, light and movement to explore the importance of bubbles, not only to science, but to our planet.
Up to My Nose Holes, 2021, by Matilda Augustinek. Spray-painted plaster sculpture. It's a humoresque comment on Covid and the bubble situation. I have it up to my nose holes is a Polish idiom for being sick and tired of something. Rainbows Rise as Bubbles Burst, 2021, by Linda Welsh. Ink on acetate and bubble wrap. A piece reflecting on the multitude of highs and lows experienced during the pandemic. Blow Me, 2012, by George Hale. Acrylic and oil on canvas. George's paintings are initially inspired by a psychological phenomenon called pareidolia, the illusion of perceiving recognisable shapes in obscure stimulus. George plays with this phenomenon by making random brush marks at the beginning of the painting, then he finds images that protrude out of these marks. George's imagination performs a vital role as the paintings develop, adding characters or items to enhance a scene. He has moved on to use more than just pareidolia, allowing his imagination free reign. He's tapping into his psyche to find out what's hidden within or using everyday incidents to inspire the story. All George's work range from humorous or sinister scenes to ambiguous, playful images. The character expresses his cool nonchalance, blowing a bubble. More Wenner, 2021, by Tina Finch. Acrylic on canvas. An expressionist style portrait of More Wenner, a Welsh name for waves of the sea. A study of being in water, showing how light refracts and reflects upon the waves, with bubbles and rivulets forming an abstract and captivating vision. Marielle, 2021, by Tina Finch. Acrylic on canvas. An expressionist style portrait of Marielle a Danish name for Star of the Sea, a study of being in water, showing how light refracts and reflects upon the waves with bubbles and rivulets forming an abstract and captivating vision. <laughs>